guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So as you can see we have got no Disney ears. We have got a Stranger Things top on. This is from Halloween Horror Nights in Universal Studios from 2019 and I want to talk to you today about my experience at the Secret Cinema Stranger Things edition. So I thought I would film this video for you about my experience and what we got up to, what missions we did, what secret rooms we got into because I watched someone else's one on YouTube if I can find it I'll link her down below so you can like listen to her experience compared to mine because it was so different and every single person I've spoken to has done a completely different thing to what I've done so now that it's ended it's finished its run I think it was on for three months um, I'm gonna now like talk about it and there'll be no spoilers now because that's it it's done you cannot go there anymore so obviously it's secret so at the time you can't discuss it and we went towards the end of the run I think there was like a week and a bit left after we went and um i was just dying dying to talk about it with everybody so let me tell you about my secret cinema stranger things experience so we get to pick an alias uh you get to pick like what year group you want to be in so we went for the class of 83 which means we were going to be pop kids and i would say that if you were going with like a, your partner or like a group of people it's good at least if you're with someone like just one person who is in the same year group as you and I'll explain so we went as pop kids and you do like a little like online questionnaire and then you get your alias so my name was Portia Walker and it was Portia Grease Lips Walker I was part of the drama group and I was also most likely be to become a lifeguard at Hawkins Pool and it also said will do well if the addictions to video games stops so that was my character so anyways, we had booked our slot for I think 6 o'clock and a lot of people said get there early. So we ended up getting there for like 10 past 5 and we, I thought there was people going in for 5 but there wasn't. But it was such a good idea to get there early. So we got there at 10 past 5 and they were like we're not like obviously going to be open until 6. I had no idea that it was like, going to be just 6. So we ended up queuing outside but we were like quite near the front. There was a few people there at that time but literally it goes all the way up the wall if you just come back later. So you obviously we wait till six, we went in, then you can get a few pictures outside real quick but they're literally like letting people in like this and once it gets to a certain amount of people they start like weaving in and out. So we ended up getting there quite early so we were quite at the front. Obviously VI people get to go in first. So we just had like a normal standard ticket. So when you go in, you go in like this little marquee, they take your phone off you, they put it in um, this little bag and it's got like a magnetic lock on it so that's locked you've got it with you you can take it in with you because you can't actually open the magnetic lock but we just put it in our locker there is a limited amount of lockers but obviously first come first serve we were there early so we managed to get one we just put both of our coats in the locker because it was absolutely freezing while standing there waiting to go inside and we just put our phones in the locker as well so once you've done all that with the lockers, you head in and you are you were literally in Starcourt Mall. So there's like podiums with each representative person from the year group. We were 83. At first we were like, D do we go over? Like we weren't really sure what to do because they weren't like beckoning us over or anything. So we had a little listen, listened to what she said and said all the stuff about class 83. And she basically said there was this guy that we need to go look for. I think his name was Tommy Jackson. And she basically just said, yep, you got to look for Tommy Jackson. He was struck by lightning. So she said to go to the guy in the fair, the cowboy in the fair who looks after the hammer stool. So that's what we did. We grabbed a drink first, had a little look around Starcott Mall. They had um, Scoop Ahoy's in there. They had the coach store in there. They had a shop where you can actually buy stuff in there. They had the arcade, which was really cool, and like a bar. So we headed on through to the fair. So we get into the fair and we go and find the guy with the hammer and basically he gives us like our mission as it were. So as we walk through I think I saw Billy, I think I saw Hopper, I saw Murray and when I say they look like the characters, they seriously look like the characters. It was so mental, like they really did well on the casting for the characters there. So I saw some of the characters and I was freaking out at this point. I was like, oh my god. I think I saw as well, like, all of the kids in Scoops Ahoy and they run through the back of the um, Scoops Ahoy shop. And honestly, I felt like I was in the show. I was like, oh my god. It was mental. So we get to the hammer guy and I say, like, we're looking for Tommy Jackson. Um, he was apparently struck by lightning. We need to get some more info. Like, wh like what do you know? He then tells us we need to go to the archives and find out all that we need to know, find out what happened on that day, find out about the lightning thing. So we went to the archives tent and there was an actress in there and she was working in there and she helped us. She told us to look on this board, she asked us if we knew Tommy and we were like yeah we were in his year group, we were at the quarry on a school trip um, and he got struck by lightning. 
she asked us if we saw him struck by lightning like it's really like um immersive like you're really are there in like class of 83 so i had a little chat with her we looked on the board it said stuff like yeah he was and there was other cuttings that were like no it was a sunny day in july there was no lightning people apparently had seen like lab coat guys in the quarry and we were like okay so it might not be true like we're not sure we looked on the little computer it said the same thing so we took this information and then we took it back to our guy he then was like okay so You've got all this information. I've heard that he was at the arcade. You need to head to the arcade and see what you can find. So then we like trot along to the arcade, obviously walking through, seeing all the characters and like all this, this stuff's happening around you and everyone's and everyone is like on their own missions. So we get to the arcade. Keith is in the arcade. We ask Keith, do you know Tommy Jackson? And he's like, yeah, he sucks ass. And we're like, okay. He then says, oh, Tommy Jackson was here yesterday and he was writing all this graffiti on the wall. You need to go see it. He finds us a torch, we go into the corner, and then there's all this graffiti that we're looking at on the wall. While this is happening, Dustin, Mike, and Lucas are there, and they're like measuring themselves on the wall, like right next to me, and honestly, I was like, <laughs> what are you doing? I was just, I didn't know what to say. So we had a little look on the graffiti on the wall, we spoke to Lucas about it, and the graffiti basically said, they've kept me in prison, they've tested on me, no one believes me, I'm in pain, all of this stuff. So we took it, we took it back, the torch back to Keith, he said, you'll probably find Tommy Jackson wandering around the fair. He's got double denim on and red shoes. So we were like, okay. So then we, at this point, we then head back into the fair. Um, we're looking around for Tommy Jackson. Obviously, it's quite difficult to find him because there's quite a few people. And while we're doing this, there's a guy talking about, like, magnets reacting and stuff on the stage. I think Joyce was up there at one point. And then we get literally pulled into doing the hoedown in the middle of the fair me and my partner and then like you swap partners and you're doing all this like hoedown stuff in the middle so we ended up doing that in front of loads of people so i was just like oh my god this is so embarrassing but you kind of just have to go with it so once we'd done that we took the information back to our hammer guy said that we seen all the stuff he was there yesterday and he apparently is wearing this and he's in the fair but we haven't found him so he was like okay because you haven't found him and he was apparently in the arcade yesterday that means he's close by so you now need to go get someone from H&N News and you need to get on the news you need to go to the news tent which was like over there you need to get on the news make a plea tell them that you believe him and that you're like here for him and all this stuff he goes don't let them fob you off and just write it down you need to take them and get in the news so we walked through the fair and I just found this boy on his own and I said do you want to come and be on the news with me? Do you want to, you want to come and be on the TV? And he was like, um, um, okay. And I was like, come on then, let's go. Because that's like how you get to your next part of your mission. At this point, there was no line. So usually I've heard that there's been a long line and people don't get any further in their mission because people don't want to help them or the line is too long. Luckily, there was no line. The guy at the news tent asked us um, what we were there for. We explained and then... The guy that was interviewing me had to write like a few questions down so I had to basically tell him why I wanted to be on the news, like what had happened. He wrote down some questions and then we had to sit in front of the camera, she counts us down and he introduces us on the news and basically he asked us why we're there and I said we're looking for Tommy Jackson and I just said Tommy like we believe you, it was so good, I literally just went in, I had all the information in my head and I just build it all out so that's why it's important to like get your mission started early so that you don't have to wait in the long line because obviously you don't want to be, be pulling people away from their missions or like letting them stand in line with you when their friends are doing other things so we had that we did that we got on the news um said all of our stuff which was great went back to zach my cowboy who does the hammer at the fair and we just said yep yeah, we've done it we've got on the news we've reached out to tommy what next he was like okay pulls us aside, whispers to us, you need to go see Murray, you have to wait outside Murray's house, and this is the password to get in, and it was Illinois Rodeo, I think it changes like every week, so we had actually seen people like congregating around like these parts, like um, near this clown, and then behind my hammer guy, behind Zach, was like a crowd of people, so we go there, and there's like loads of people, and the girl at the front of the door was like, if you don't have a password, you need to leave right now. So she was like, in her little American accent, she was really good. Everyone pretty much left when she said that. And it was just me and my boyfriend and two other people that were left. So that's interesting. So you have to get to a certain point in your mission to get that password to see Murray. So we're waiting outside. Um, and obviously, essentially, what's going on around you is season three is actually playing on in there while you're doing your own mission. So... 
while we were waiting, Jonathan actually came out of Murray, so he'd obviously had a scene in the show that was happening in there before we went in. Murray eventually lets us in, we go in with him, and honestly he looked exactly like Murray from the uh, programme, like it was scary. And um, we all sit in there and it's it looks exactly like his house, so the bunker looks exactly like the one in the film, well, programme. Um, and he just basically says, do you want to know the truth? Do we want to know the truth? We had like a little or a little chat like that, someone asked about someone, I think Carrie Fisher, and he just basically said, we want to know the truth, whatever. He was like, I've got some information for you, follow me. So then we head out to the back of Murray's bunker, and we're like in this little walkway, and there's like pin boards on the, each side of the wall, and he was like, find your year group and get your information. So it's kind of essentially what we'd already seen in the archives room, um, all like the newspaper clippings, like a few odd pictures here and there, that sort of thing. So after you've had a little look at the boards, Murray then says, a door has opened if you want to take it and we were like yeah and this is literally so cool so basically the secret door opens that you didn't come through and there's barbed wire fence each side like um just like normal fencing and it's pitch black but there's like flashing lights and noises so we're like running down this long corridor i'm like don't i'm like literally like oh my god where the hell are we going this is so cool this, and then as we get to the end, this big demagogue noise like comes out of nowhere. My boyfriend was so scared, like you just don't expect it. Then you end up running out into the woods. And then we're now in the woods. And in front of us is Hopper's cabin, literally identical to the um, program. And the guy basically says, come back here in like 20 minutes or so. So anyways, we get a drink and we head on back to the um, Hopper's cabin in the woods. So by this point, we've got to the woods. There's people congregating around. We're waiting. And out of nowhere, like, up comes Mike and Lucas, and they're arguing about something, and then they head in. So we all head in and follow them, and literally everyone's in there. All the kids are in there, Eleven, Max, um, Will, um, Jonathan's in there, they're all in there. And they act out the scene where, basically, Max says to Mike about Elle dumping your ass and all that stuff, and the boys are like, no, and all this. So it's literally that scene we got to watch. Elle sitting in the corner with the blindfold mask on. I think quite a few scenes happen in there, so depending on if you end up finding it or getting pulled in, you can get pulled into it. Um, you just see different scenes throughout the show. And all of a sudden, Elle takes off the blindfold and she's like, Billy has found us. And you know, it's when he finds them in the cabin. And everyone was like, you gotta get out, you gotta get out, run, run, run. So Billy had like found us in the cabin. So then we end up all literally running out of this cabin and we run straight into the fair, which I've seen a lot of people saying, like, where are all these people running from behind curtains, like straight into the fair. So that was us. So then we go back to Zach because we haven't seen Zach for a while at this point and we basically give him our info that we went to Murray's, we've been in Hopper's cabin, we've done this, this and this. He then gives us somewhere else to go. So there was a fortune teller's tent so he tells us to go there. And as we're waiting for the fortune teller, Will pops so long and he starts standing and talking to us. And I don't know what came over me but I was just so just in awe of them I just thought it was just mental so he starts talking to me asks us both our names obviously I'm Porsche my boyfriend was Andrew like we have to be in character he basically needed like a guardian to go into the fortune teller because he was 14 so we ended up being his second cousins and he came in with us we hid him so he ends up sitting in the middle and he wanted his cards read so she gets out the cards and one automatically falls out so she was like okay we'll have this one because this one's obviously jumped out it's obviously for you and the one that jumped out she was like Porsche do you want to turn it over over. so I flip over this card and she basically says to him something bad is coming something's coming and just before we go into the fortune teller's tent Zach our cowboy basically says you've got to be back here at 20 past because you know there's going to be a big mayor's speech it's all going to go off it's like the 4th of July fireworks so you need to be back here so that's obviously why you have a watch as well and as she said to him you know something bad's going to happen he starts going like this like feeling it like as he does in the program and he's like oh my god I need to leave so he gets up he runs out and she's like oh Portia you shouldn't have turned that card over and all this stuff and she basically says we need to leave now because something's happening in the fair so a lot of people do go for her for info but I think that is mainly another storyline because we didn't really get any info from her it was kind of like the end of like the storyline now so we had like three hours and we did all of that in three hours it felt like we had no time to stop we didn't have time to like really eat anything there's so many good food places there was no time really to sit down because you kind of just had to keep going and I wanted to keep going as far as we could with our like storyline as it were it's quite exciting 
So Zach had told us all to meet at like this specific point in the fair. All class of 83 are going to meet here at this time. So that's where we headed to. Everyone from 83 was congregating. Zach was there. And there was the mayor. He was doing a speech. And I can't remember too much of what was said. But like he was doing a speech. Whatever, whatever. I saw this guy walk past. And I was like, oh, he looks like a Linksky. But I was like, okay, he must just look like him. Because I hadn't seen him at all throughout the night. Um, and throughout this... I think Murray then comes on the stage at one point and he says, like, we've got the truth or whatever it was. And each one by one, each year group, the people that we were all looking for stands up. So Tommy Walker or Tommy Robinson stands up. Walker, Tommy Robinson, I can't remember his name. Stands up on the, t on the, um, on the stand along with everybody else. And we're all, like, cheering. We're like, yeah, yeah, we did it. So basically they all got found. All the people that were missing, they were found. And while this is happening... Um, a Linksky, I can't remember this happened after or before, I think this was after, like, a Linksky, like, wanders up onto the stage, and he's got, like, this Woody Woodpecker toy that he obviously won at the fair, and, um, I was like, okay, this is gonna be the scene from the show, so he gets shot by a Russian that comes along, there's, like, literally blood everywhere, the Russian then tries to run away, and then Hopper comes along, and Hopper's, like, fighting him, the Russian does a flip, and they're, like, having a fight, which was really good, and then, quite literally out of nowhere, young Elle with the shaved head, who you haven't seen, like, the whole night, comes out of nowhere, and she does her mind tricks on the Russian, and she's doing this, and then all of a sudden, like, there's actors amongst you, they all start shaking, and they're all, like, like, they're off, obviously, like, and they're being flayed, as it were, they all like eyes on the back of their head, they're all shaking, shaking. I'm like, oh my god, what's going on? And then they start pushing their way, like over to like the left hand side of us. So you're essentially being pushed. So we and it's like this big dark hanger with like stuff around the outside of it, so you know that stuff's gonna happen all around you. So that is like the finale. So in there it was just like a lot of stuff from the films. They played out a lot of stuff on the screens with the actors there as well. They had um in the, they had Elle's mum coming through the crowd, they like parted the way, Elle's mum's going through the crowd and then a demogorgon comes into the crowd and the demogorgon gets there and then shaved head Elle's at the other end of the room and she's doing her mind powers on him and then he disappears and Billy's there, like as soon as you get in Billy's there and Heather's at the other end and they're talking as if like the monster is talking from inside of them, it was really good. Um, there was one girl who played Elle. There's two shaved head Elle's girls. One at the end, one at the other end. One of them looked exactly like Elle. It was scary. Um, but I will say, like, it was a bit weird because cause it was all around you. And because one thing was happening at one end, one thing was happening at the other end. It was a bit like you were constantly having to turn. And then a lot of stuff happened in the middle. And if I knew this, I would have gone to the middle, but I didn't know. And there was a bit where... Elle's in Billy's mind and she she's up or up on the top in his mind and then you know when she falls into the blackness in slow-mo there was Elle from season three in the middle of us and she comes up out of nowhere like on um on an aerial and she's doing like the slow-mo in the air which was great and then a lot of other things like when Elle was getting taken by the monster like all the characters were in the middle like pulling her down and this is what also was really interesting a lot of people in the middle and around that all sat down like all knelt down so that everyone could see what was happening maybe they were told to do that but there was a specific group of like people in front of us especially like a couple in particular who just stood up so that no one behind them could see and we were like can you sit down because we were behind them so I don't think that really works well. I feel like if everyone was sat down, it would be a lot easier. Like, you'd be able to see a lot more. Um, but it was great. It was really good. Because obviously, normal Secrets in Mars, that's where you watch the movie. So that was, like, a nice way to see how they were going to, like, tie that in to the Secret Cinema. Um, so I loved it. It was really good. The actors were literally insane. I absolutely loved it. I wish I could do it again. And then after this, you head back into the fair. Because we went to an evening show, I think it's different in a matinee. You get kicked straight out. In the evening, we got back into the fair, and that's when we got some food. We got some fries, some loaded fries, and we just ate them because we barely had time to eat. So even though it was three hours, and we got there on time... I feel like I feel like we did a lot of our mission. We got into Murray's. A lot of people I know didn't get into Murray's. And there's a secret passageway in Coach, and that's a different storyline to, to meet a Russian, which is what I watched on YouTube. And obviously, some people get um, to see a different ending. So the ending we saw in the fair, my friend saw a completely different one, and it was being flayed with Billy and someone on a table. They ended up seeing that ending, so they didn't actually see what happened in the fair. So there's so many different avenues you can go down. 
and I can see now why people do it more than once like if we had gone early on in the run I think I might have gone again but there was just so much going on like so so much so I would like to go back again into another era to see where I went with that and also like to go back and do Billy's ending and, and join one of Billy's like gangs like join his party but I'm really happy with what we did I feel like we saw a lot we got to speak to a lot of characters I feel like we did everything that our mission was supposed to do and we got into Murray's which I absolutely loved and um, we went into Hopper's cabin as well which was great it literally looked like the movie it was just so immersive I absolutely loved it I would highly recommend it to anyone like I know you can't do Stranger Things anymore and I hope a lot of you that love Stranger Things got the chance to do it and we can talk about it in the comments because I love talking about it. I love telling people about my experience and I absolutely love hearing your experience. So if you have done it, please tell me what your experience was. Leave it in the comments or you can message me on Instagram. Like my handles are in my bio description. So you can message me and we can discuss different things that you saw. Because each person I spoke to has seen completely different things to the other person. So it was just, it was great. It was mind blowing. I loved it. And I am 100% going to do more secret cinemas. I just hope they do a Disney one because that would be insane. So that was my first secret cinema and I'm hooked. Like I can't wait to do more. They've got Dirty Dancing in the summer. We have been debating doing that, me and some of the girls. So we may do that, but it's outside. So that'll be completely different to the Stranger Things one. But yeah, I just wanted to share that with you. I hope um, that's been informative in case you're wondering what it was like or if you wanna do one in the future. So thank you so much for watching this video. I know it's been a long one, had a lot to talk about. But if you did enjoy this video, then please give it a thumbs up. You can put your notifications on so that you don't miss any from me. And yeah, please subscribe if you liked it. And I'll see you soon with more videos. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.